Hello, so here's a little bit of a taste of what's coming up in this video. We're gonna use SSH, Secure Shell, to do magic stuff on our host computer, uh, which is the VCC Final Bud Online. I've set it up so that different users get different things when they log in with SSH. So the snakes user enters their password. Guess what? They are playing a game. They're playing a game where they're hunting down that thing and they're playing the snake game. Ah. They gotta go W, get up, A, uh. So that user gets a Python script that plays a game. The next user called hidden gets a Cheroot jail. They are in this sort of limited environment um, where they're always stuck in the same folder. And uh, well, their challenge was to get the flag and the flag was hidden, so LS, LA, cat, dot did i do a space cat dot flag okay that was fun whereas if you log in as root you basically got full control of the computer let me just enter the password this is actually a harder password please there we go so that's what's coming up you're gonna learn how to set up your computer to do this to basically serve different things through SSH to different people who log in. So before we jump into actually modifying the SSHD config file so we can SSH into various Python scripts, let's just get a little bit of a theoretical background of SSH. So of course we gotta start by asking the great oracle ChatGPT. And what does ChatGPT say? Well, I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but I'm gonna summarize it for you. Essentially, SSH is a protocol that allows secure remote login or in other secure network services over an insecure network. Essentially, you SSH from computer A to computer B and a secure encrypted connection is established. It uses public key cryptography. So what does this mean? That means that either you can enter the correct user and password, and then there's going to be a secure channel uh, based on this key exchange, or you could actually save the private key on the client computer, and then it's gonna give that to the server so you can log in without even using your password. So it can be set up to be really, really quite dynamic. Now, if you are, um, a handsome Linux system admin standing in front of a server rack. This was my um, stable diffusion prompt. Uh, what would what would you be doing? You know, what are the most common five uses of SSH? And interestingly enough, the serving of scripts doesn't make the top five. So there's a whole lot more than what we're gonna learn in this video that you could also do with SSH. Uh, remote server access. I showed you that a little bit when I logged in as root. Secure file transfer, SFTP, secure file transfer protocol. Essentially, this is like, um, yeah, I mean, secure copy SCP does the same thing. You can basically transfer files securely from computer to computer. Remote command execution. Yeah, when you log in as root, you can basically even schedule commands. With cron tabs, check out my last video. That's exactly what we do port forwarding so you could basically you know connect your computer to the internet via um uh an ssh tunnel that you've set up and vpns are very much on the same theme so the stuff that we're going to do i'm going to basically show you where it's from and how i used it the the examples that i've shown at the start of the video is essentially three different users getting three vastly different things. Snakes get served a Python script that plays a game. Hidden gets into a Cheroot jail, which is like a, a setup directory. That's a video on its own. But um, this is like, this is like you get a super limited shell without access to the local file system. And the root basically gets root access. One more thing to show you is if you look in the background here, there are two live scoreboards in this competition, and they also got to see the live scoreboards and their beautiful colored printouts by SSHing into a user called scoreboard. So that would display the live scoreboard. Okay, enough theory, let's do this. All right, so here we are, we have two virtual machines, they're both Kali's. Um, the one on the right is 
essentially a brand new one that it's got nothing on it, no other users. And so the very key thing here, if you're gonna do this like me, set it up in VirtualBox to test it out, um, make sure that all of your virtual machines have the setting right here on a bridged network adapter. That's going to basically allow them to talk to each other. So if you go, uh, if con config, you're gonna get the two IP addresses, if config, right? And if you want to test if they can talk to each other, just copy this address or whatever. You could do this vice versa. It doesn't matter. Control C and you can just ping it. And when you ping it, it's going to be, you know, getting an OK from. So this is going to be kind of, this is the ping machine. And it basically says, yeah, I'm here. I'm ready to establish two way communication. So um, how to install SSH? Well. SSH comes installed on Kali, so you don't need to do a thing. Um, but here's the installation command. sudo, sudo at, there you go, autocomplete, open SSH server. Um, essentially, Kali already has it, but if you have Ubuntu or something, it's not going to have it. Um, the way that you start SSH, um, sudo, systemctl start ssh now there is something weird um there is when you run it first this is the second time i've recorded this video when you run it first it's going to say enabled but it's not going to say active running and so this is going to be very confusing because it's going to say, oh, SSH enabled, but it's not active and running. So you essentially need to, after starting it, I find pro tip. That's the reason I am re-recording this video because after starting it, you need to restart uh, SSH. So that is sudo systemctl restart SSH. Now this restarting, gets it actually running for real. How do you test that it's running? Well, there's a super fun way to test this, right? So now we've got essentially running SSH. Let me just let me just do the status again. See, when it says active running, the enabled isn't enough. It needs to say active running. We can basically do some fun stuff. We could SSH into this computer. We could see where we are. Ooh cd desktop touch you've been hacked so you can actually type in a command like this and this will appear on the desktop like the we've logged in basically the computer on the left which is logged into the computer on the right by ssh has now got full admin privileges and let's just say okay we we don't like this we want to we want to stop these full admin privileges ah i've already got a terminal open don't i Close you, close you. No, I don't have a terminal. I do have the terminal open. Let's say we want to stop these. We want next time this guy goes in to hack us, we want to say, no, we're not, we're not going to be hacked. I should actually zoom in a little bit for you guys. All right. So how to do this? There is a file. Let's see if we can cat it. Let's go find it first of all. So, you know, the, we're going to go into um etsy and there is a folder cd ss ssh so it's in the ssh folder and it's called sshd config this file this ssh config and then this sshd config um please if you know the difference between them um give us a comment below but i've always edited sshd config so i'm going to nano sshd config and essentially everything that's commented out doesn't happen but at the end of this file is where you edit it is you create new entries 
you can basically create limited users, which are truths. That's a separate tutorial, but also you could serve a Python script. So like, I'll show you what this looks like over here. Um, you can create a match user Kali. And in here, you can go and create some kind of home Kali. Let's do a script go away dot pi. So now when Kali logs in, it should run the script go away dot pi. Now I haven't created go away dot pi and I haven't edited this thing as a, um, you need to edit this as an admin. So control exit. We can't save the modified buffer sudo nano sshd config. All right, so there is one thing other than also editing with admin privileges for this file that we need to add. And that's actually something called force command. You actually can see it right here. So when you're gonna match the user, match user Kali, you're gonna start after tabbing with a force command. This is magic because force command essentially allows you to run anything like this could be you could do a bash script here. But look, I'm I'm Python obsessed. So everything I do is Python three, and then something. Um, so home Kali will, will stick with that name go away dot pi. So then after we create the script, we are going to be able to run it. However, however, very, very important. Um, we need to restart sudo systemctl. You could stop and start or stop SSH systemctl start SSH. So now we need that Python script um, nano go away dot pi. What are we going to do here? Let's just let's be nice import time import time for I in range 10 print go away and stop abusing admin privileges. Okay, so that um, time dot sleep. So this should be nice time dot sleep one second. So it's going to actually print this message 10 times. Hopefully that should be a lot of fun. So if we SSH this time and use the password, it's gonna do this to you, go away and stop abusing admin privileges. And then it's gonna stop. And you're gonna be back in your own computer connection closed. So there you go. That is how to serve scripts in SSH. So you could basically, uh, I guess, scale this up to, to do different things with different users. So let's create a new user. Um, there are two ways. There's Linux add user and there is Linux user add. I think add user is better because it prompts you to the password. So if I add user and it also creates a folder for that user. So it's really nice. So if I add user Bob, right? And only root sudo add user Bob and new password can be just something silly, easy. Okay. Oh, passwords do not match. Yes. Okay, so now we can um, actually log in, try to log in as Bob. So if we say Bob at, um, what was that address? It's right here. Bob SSH. So now we're SSHing as Bob and we've logged in as Bob and uh, we can't really mess with the desktop, I don't think, because there's nothing in here. And if I go CD home LS 
CD Kali, permission denied. So I can't get into the Bob's got, because it's a new user, Kali is the default one with admin privileges. Bob definitely doesn't have them. So there you go. Now we've got a limited user, but also if we wanted to, if we wanted to have Bob um, receive the go away script, or if we wanted to have a the Bob receive some other script, you could just repeat the same thing, but for Bob, match user, Bob, uh, Python three, I guess we can go go away, we can create a go away bob.py and then you can just go um, aha maybe I think can Kali access bobs given that Kali's admin let's see cd home probably not actually ls cd bob permission denied sudo su CD Bob, and now we can create a script for Bob. So it was going to be called go away Bob.py. So nano go away Bob.py, and we can print just keep it simple this time go away Bob. So now Bob's going to get his customized go away message. We're going to save that just to confirm one more time. When we log in as Bob, ah, Bob's gonna get out of here. Control C, Control D, bye bye, Bob. When Bob logs in, everything's gonna be okay again because we haven't restarted SSH. So Bob's still got admin privileges, but watch this. I'm gonna exit and now I'm going to sudo systemctl restart SSH. And now when Bob logs in, go away Bob. So yeah, that covers it. I hope you found it useful. Um, sorry for a bit of a hiccup in the middle. I have done this many, many times, but I haven't touched it in five or six months. So, well, yeah, three months. Time is different when you have a baby. That's all for today. Make sure to like and subscribe and check out the previous video on cron jobs. I think it's very well connected to this one. Bye.